What is up, everybody? Dan Dan the Fireman here. We're going to be going over this crash right here. Right here. And uh, we're going to be talking about what happened, how it happened. It's pretty self-explanatory. we got gravel on the road. But we're going to talk about a lot of the good stuff. We're going to take a break from the Max Risk video where there's a massive injury. And I know a lot of you guys uh, didn't like seeing that. I personally don't like seeing massive injuries. But it's uh, it's part of the game. You know, sometimes this is what happens. But I want to show you something that that happens kind of the same way. But we're doing a lower speed. We're, we're trying our best to be safe. We're wearing full gear. And we're going to see how minimal these injuries are on something like this. You know, they're going about 40 kilometers an hour. So thank you, Ironic Rebound, for letting me use this footage. But right off the bat, right here is what I want to show you guys. These guys are utilizing the skills that are needed. You notice how he's lifting his butt up when he's going over an obstacle or a bump? Perfect, perfect situation to do this in so now he's going to be able to control his bike better because it's not going to buck him off i did a video on that with the train tracks the guy didn't do that and it really messed him up broken collarbone and a few other things so good job on this man really good job we're going to go ahead and skip some of this stuff but i want to show you some context first so we got these people riding in a group ride, a small group ride through the Muskoka area roads here. Look at the roads, though. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the roads. The roads are in terrible, terrible conditions, okay? These aren't very good. Let's go ahead and look at some of the uh, hazards and, and the factors that could lead to a crash. First, we don't have a shoulder, so we have bad escape routes. You know, the only escape routes we have are within our lane or into oncoming traffic. Not good or off the road. We also don't have a real passing zone. So what that means is that these turns are going to be nice and sharp. There are going to be uh, no visibility, so they don't want people passing. So that should give you uh, a good idea and a clue you in that these roads are going to be blind turns and not straight enough to go fast enough to pass anybody because of these lines are solid like this. Uh, also take a look at the roadway conditions. Right now it's not gonna, it doesn't look crazy, but while we're watching this footage, you're gonna see how nasty this road is. And what I tell people when they wanna get a brand new bike, I'll get back to the roads, don't worry. When they wanna buy a brand new bike, a brand new person, beginner rider, like, hey, should I get an R6? Should I get a BMW 1000 R? Should I get this, should I get this? I always say, yeah, go ahead. And then everyone's confused, like, what, shouldn't you be recommending a, like a Grom or a 150, a 250, a 300? Like, no, it's like you get whatever you want, ride within your abilities, though. Your bike, let's say the bike's abilities are like this big, super big. And as a beginner rider, you're right here. Ride within this right here. These abilities, this is your upper and lower limit. This is the bike's uh, uh, lower and upper limit. So ride within your ability. And before you know it, your ability gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And boom, look at that. You're riding now within your bike's abilities. So if you start off as a new rider, you're like this, R3 right here. You start getting your abilities bigger. Well, guess what? Now you're riding within your bike's abilities. And a lot of people don't like that. It causes problems. But when we look at roads, a lot of people don't think about this. Let's go ahead and add, let's go back. You know, we're a beginner rider. Here's our bike, okay? We're not gonna ride within uh, our bike's abilities, we're gonna ride within our abilities. But let's say the road over here is like so messed up, this is your upper and lower limit and this is you now. Are you still gonna ride within your ability? No, you wanna ride within the road's ability. If the road's in great condition and this is you, this is the road, well then ride within your ability. But ride within the, uh, the smallest and the most hazardous uh, uh, position. So if the road's the most hazardous to the overall group, to you, to the bike, whatever it is, ride within that ability. If the road is in a good position, but you're the most hazardous because you don't have the skill, ride within your ability. So you have to constantly be riding within the lowest person's ability. So if you're in a group ride, ride within their ability. So that's what I'm trying to get at with that. So we're going to take a look at this. You're going to take a look at the road and we're going to get some context for what's going on here. So they're actually talking about how it's really bumpy, really gravelly, really dangerous. So they're taking it relatively slow. It's a 40 kilometer an hour road. They're going about 42 ish. So, I mean, they're, they're riding the speed limit. Look at the road. Okay. Let's go back to that real quick. So what he's doing right there, if you guys are wondering, if you ever see any riders do this, and you have no clue what that means. That means uh, that there's debris or a hazard to the right of him. If he was putting out his left leg, uh, a debris and, or a hazard to the left of him. This way you can keep your hands on the handlebars. You just 
move your feet if you don't have a comm system. Uh, during this situation, Ironic Rebound has a comm system possibly with the person up front. Now, typically in a group ride, that's called the captain and then the tails in the back. Um, there's many different names, but a captain up front, tail in the back, uh, tail gunner, something like that. It's probably military related, uh, but they're communicating with each other. So the person in the back is going to tell the person up front, hey, somebody crashed or we missed you. You hit, you went past this light and we got a red light and then they'll communicate with each other or the person up front saying, hey, we're going to be turning uh, pretty soon or hey, there's a lot of debris. There's a cop up here, whatever it is that he feels the uh, tail gunner should know. So pretty good to have a communication system if you want to get a communication system that i have i use this with nikki we got the dual pack cardo pack talk slims it's relatively expensive for what it is but it's top of the line and on top of that we split the cost so you might want to find a buddy if you ride consistently with them split the cost link will be in the description first comment so right here we got a sharp right and a sharp left turn 40 kilometers an hour uh, recommendation they're going about 40 they're doing a good job so speed is not a factor in this situation you notice how they uh, went into single file for these turns they picked their own version of their own best lines that's great you don't have to be staggered through turns through twisties and all that stuff you can be staggered on straightaways especially through traffic because you don't want people to come into your lane and and break up your group but in these situations nobody's passing you nobody's doing anything crazy so you can actually spread out and get your best line so you get the best vision best everything it's loose gravel yeah so all this stuff right here let's go ahead and scroll back um typically when you do a turn for speed uh, you go outside inside outside so if you went outside and you went inside here to the apex the apex is the point where you're closest to the inside of the turn let's say right where the dude in yellow uh, the high vis helmet is he that's his apex let's say he did outside inside so he should be all the way to the inside well, guess what? There's a lot of gravel there. So when I talk about picking your, your good line and my default is middle, 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 the reason why I say that is because there's usually a lot of gravel on the inside and there's usually cars on the outside or you know vice versa. So there's gonna be hazards on both ends. But if there is a hazard in the middle when I'm doing my middle, 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 guess what? I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move to the inside or the outside, whatever it is, I'm gonna move away from the hazard. So that's the beauty of us having lane position one, two, and three. If there's a hazard in one, move to two. If there's a hazard in two, move to one or three. If there's a hazard in two and three, move to one. Constantly be doing that. And if there's a ton of hazards and it's really messing up your line and how fast you're going, well, guess what? You shouldn't be going fast on that road then. Play within the road's abilities. So this is a good job. Big bump right here. You see how it knocked him out of his lane? That happened to me uh, when I first started riding. I was, the story time here, I was in uh, Phoenix and you know those big concrete bridges, those on and off ramps, they were moving. Uh, it's a two lane road. I was on the inside, lane position one inside. I was on my Harley Sportster. I was hauling ass. I loved this being dumb. And, but I was going highway speeds, you know, I was going 65, I was going on the on ramp. So I was going, looking this way, do it. I hit a bump where it connects those con uh, the concrete. It launched me from lane position one in the inside lane out of the two lanes to lane position two of the outside lane. So I would have hit a vehicle if it was there or I would have went off the bridge if I was in the next lane. So this is where you wanna take it nice and easy on these turns. You never know if that bump is a big bump, low bump, doesn't matter, you don't know. So what happened here is he hit that bump even at 49 kilometers an hour, it pushed him that much further. He's in the middle of a turn, it bumped him, got some air, moved over. Thankfully, he was able to keep it up, but be aware of that. And if that happens to you and you're able to keep it up, get back in your lane as quick as you can, because guess what? We have a turn coming. You don't know if a car's coming either. So these are all clues. If you start seeing gravel, you start getting bumpy, hey, let's take it let's take it easy or even easier than what we're doing. We're going the speed limit. Let's go ahead and go five under the speed limit. You know what I mean? Try to keep the bike as upright as possible on these turns. So he crashed right there, but when that happens, you don't see it because it's a blind turn. So in these blind turns, you can't see the hazard, you can't see the person falling. So let's slow it down. Maybe start off on lane position three, move to lane position two, or whichever was less hazards, that we have the best vision and line of sight. Line of sight is a very big important thing when it comes to these corners. And it's, if they're blind, that means we need to slow it down so that we can see around at that slower speed. We have better reaction time. So here's that crash that I was talking about. You see how he slowed down a lot? He slowed down, so now he's more upright. 
sometimes you have to go this slow around these turns, especially when there's a lot of gravel. I actually do this into my neighborhood sometimes because they're doing a lot of construction. I'll actually slow down so much that I'm basically upright doing slow speed stuff like I would be in a parking lot just to make that turn and then I'll accelerate out of that. Sometimes you just have to do that. You don't have to take turns at 15, 20 miles an hour or more. You can, you can do it at five to 10 if, you, if the conditions are, are telling you to do that. So there's the gravel that, that really got him. Now, as you can tell, there's not much he could do in this situation, but why do you think the gravel is in the center position and on the shoulder, but not in lane position one or three? Typically, that's where car tires are going. When the car tires go over it, they kick away dirt. So debris, road hazards, all these different things, you tend to find them in lane position two or on the shoulders. When it's raining, you'll see the, the dry marks where tire marks are right in that spot, right in these spots when it comes to debris. There's nothing wrong with that. You're just limited to certain things because of the road conditions. And if you're limited to certain things because of the road, because of the road conditions, then we need to start playing at that. We need to start limiting ourselves. Let's not say, hey, I should be able to do this. Hey, road conditions say no. So he dropped the Let's bike. Let's get him off the road here, hold on. So he, he recognized, he did a quick scene survey. This guy's doing okay. Let's get the bike off the road. We just crashed in the middle of a blind turn. Guess what? There could be cars wanting to come around this turn and hitting us because we're in a blind spot. So let's get everything off the road. He seems to be fine. Bike seems to be okay. It's not on fire. It's not, you know, you know whatever. It's just, let's get it off the road. Perfect situation, guys. That's what you got to do. Take it off the road. Let's go ahead and skip a little bit farther than this. I just said farther. I'm going to have to. So they're picking up the bike. Now I do have a video on how to pick it up by yourself. So if you're by yourself, um, you might want to learn how to do that. You can do it by the handlebars or getting up and getting your butt next to the seat and pretty much deadlifting it up. Um, video link will be in the description for that. So I stand down. Let's get it out of the middle here. Yeah, so he's like, eh, we got to get it out of here. So let's go and skip forward just a little bit. Oh, that was really interesting. So this is something you could do on uh, a sport bike. This is something... Uh, Cruisers have a tough time doing this if you can even do this, but sport bikes tend to be able to do this. So this is really cool right here. Yeah. All right. I personally don't do that, um, but in this situation, it worked out great. So there's plenty of videos on how to do that. I just don't have one. So let's go ahead and move it forward. We're getting it off the road. Good job, good job. He turned it off. Very good, very good. So he broke his shifter. That's his shifter, so he won't be able to shift. So whatever gear he was in when he crashed, quite possibly third gear, uh, he's going to have to ride at home in third gear. But how do you start from a dead stop to third gear? A lot of friction zone, some throttle, and then taking it easy. If you stall, you stall, try it again. Keep trying again until you can get into third gear, maintain third gear until you can get safely somewhere. Or tow it. I think that's what they do. So the reason why there's that high-pitched noise is because uh, the comm systems. So he's actually moving his bike further down the road, which is very good because in the middle of that turn right here, let's say somebody uh, got distracted by the motorcyclist on the side of the road and target fixated. They're turning, turning. What's that? Boom, hits you. Very common with police and fire. So we are always cognizant of traffic, and that's what you want to do, especially if you're on the side of the road. <laughs> All right, let me see what you got. So I'm assuming the guy in the red jacket has said that. Let me see what you got. And he's checking his his gear. He's checking the guy. Um, or, you know, he's checking the bike. But, yeah, uh, you'll see them checking the guy pretty soon. Hey, though. I'm okay. This is a okay. but Your back? Your head? Did you hit your head? No, no, no. I went down on this. So he said he went down. He said, no, 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 he didn't hit his head. That's a good start. He says he went down with his left hand. Remember, he low-sided to the left, so the mechanism of injury that could possibly happen is mostly to the left side. You can have some to the right if you start tumbling, but mostly to the left. So a common reaction for somebody falling is putting their hands down. So you got to check the hands, check the wrist, check the elbow, check the shoulder, check the collarbone, all these different things. But if he's saying he's fine, he has structural mobility, he's perfectly fine, he's not guarding, he's not doing like, ah, my arm, you know, ah, my hips and my, my ribs. He's not doing that. So that's really good. It's a good sign. Um, but you definitely want to be careful with this. Uh, he could fracture something. He might not be uh, feeling it right now. He could feel it later. So, yeah, you might feel it a lot later, dude. Sorry. So your head didn't touch the floor, right? My head didn't touch the floor. And that's a good uh, thing to ask, and it's a good thing to even uh, remember because after this ride, you want to check your helmet. Um, if there's, you can have gouges, you can have scratches on the outer shell. That's perfectly fine. You don't want to, but 
that's fine. Uh, it's not going to affect too much of the structural stability of the helmet. The thing that you want to check is on the inside. So pull out all the liners, pull out all that stuff, and take a look at that foam. If you have any cracking, you have any, any indentions, you have anything that looks out of the ordinary, more than likely that helmet did what it's supposed to do, saved your brain, and it's time to throw it and get a new one. <laughs> So you see the discoloration, so that's a lot of the dirt right here. Um, so that's gonna show you the contact. You know, whenever you see like a car accident, you see the paint transfer, you know, if it's a red car hit a silver car, you're gonna see red paint on the on the silver car. So here you're gonna see dirt on the body. So that's gonna show you the contact that happened. So this is the area I'd, I'd definitely check, but you see how he has that puncture in his Kevlar jeans. These are motorcycle jeans. Crazy, huh? You could barely even tell. That's how good they're getting. So guys, there's really no excuse not to have the appropriate gear. So anyways, a uh, little soapbox there. He's got full gear and he's able to walk away from this. It's a 40 kilometer an hour, 40 kilometer an hour low side and he's able to just walk away from it. Very lucky, there's some people that can't do that, but minimizing the injuries and mitigating some of the damage with gear. It's very important. Uh, the puncture that he possibly had is from a rock. When he low sided, the rocks uh, cut that portion, so he might have some bruising at that spot on his flesh. Uh, not the biggest of deals when he could have a broken tib fib, he could have you know a broken elbow or really bad road rash on his, on his hands, but he's got full gear. Wear your gear. Kevlar. Yeah, this is Kevlar, yeah. Kevlar. Your ankle's good. Your ankles feel okay? Yeah, yeah, my ankles are fine. All right. Because they, yeah. So very good guys, uh, this was a low side accident with a group that was paying attention. It just so happened that it was a surprise. Uh, this wasn't something that was planned obviously, but it was something that they tried their best to minimize, but you know, things happen, especially on motorcycles. So wear your gear, make sure you have the protection. He had sliders on, it broke his shifter, but those are easily replaced compared to going to the hospital having a five to 100,000, even more dollar bill. So good job guys, Ironic Rebound. If you have more footage, man, I would love to see more of your videos. It seems like you're you're taking your group riders on a good ride, you're not doing anything crazy. So good job guys, congrats to everybody. So he's gonna cut off the rest of uh, the stuff right there. Those are trauma shears right there. So that's what I recommend people have uh, in their trauma kit. Uh, those will cut through a lot. No allergies, no meds, no history. No allergies, no meds, no history. So no allergies to any medication.